it's important to keep that on the table, uh, but I think we need a process. And so what I'm looking for is an unredacted version of the report. I'm looking for testimony from Robert Mueller, uh, as well as McGahn uh, and uh, the Attorney General. I am proud to stand by the findings of the report because truth crushed to the ground will always rise again. Because truth, my friends, is a blindfolded woman and she will prevail. It is day 15 today of the Biden administration and on day one, President Biden, and we listened as he spoke, he promised to usher in a new era of bipartisanship, he said, and healing. First, let's understand what that day was about. That there are some who are trying to kind of downplay it. It was tourists visiting. Okay, we can laugh that off because we know that wasn't the case. What you want to do is destroy this guy's life, hold this seat open, and hope you win in 2020. You've said that, not me. Shame on us. Shame on this body. Shame on each and every one of you who substitutes your will and your desires above those of your fellow countrymen. Well, first of all, thank you all for having us. You know, I won two record elections. Last time I was elected governor, won a record margin in my state. Martha, we got a lot of politicians that will kiss babies, cut ribbons, do whatever it takes to be popular. That's not why I ran for office. I ran for office to make the generational changes in Louisiana. We can't do that because we'd be upsetting the president, the president of the United States. I can't believe it. But no, no, no. Gosh, we... We might poke the bear, is the language I've been hearing in the hallways. We, we might poke the bear. The president might get upset with us. The United States Senate right now, on June the 12th, is becoming a body where, well, we'll do what we can do, but my gosh, if the president gets upset with us, then we might not be in the majority. His party lost ground in the House. They split the Senate, and they maintained their trailing minority of governorships, but they seem to ignore that. In his first 50 days, he did 34 executive orders, more than anyone in history. And I would say to my colleagues, particularly those on the other side of the aisle, who have heartfeltly fought hard for not cutting Medicaid drastically, for keeping pre-existing conditions, for not doing tax cuts to the rich, while you're cutting health care to the poor, don't go along with this motion to proceed because you know and I know what it will lead to. And you know what? They are right. This economy has not been fair to the working men and women of this nation. They'd been wined and dined. They didn't feed them the prison food. I don't know why they fed them, but they came back and they thought it was a great idea. And they did not come. So I was reading the Boston Globe one day, and I pick it up, and it literally, there was an article about Landmark School in Price Crossing, Massachusetts, a school for dyslexics, which I had never heard of, but I am dyslexic, so it piqued my interest. So this is $36 million for the Pioneer Valley Transit Authority. And I know Administrator Sheehan is here today. We have almost made good on everything. And I want to just point something out that I think is easily lost sometimes in translation. Parents are having to explain to their kids how they can go to church and feel safe. And that's not something we ever thought we'd deal with. Having said that, we are a strong and faithful state. by DirecTV. Proud to support children's programming on PBS. DirecTV delivers access to over 210 channels of digital entertainment, including family-oriented movies, music, and cable networks. So what are you looking at? 